Hey guys, it's Scott Flanders, and I'm back with more tips from the Monster Lab. Check out our previous lessons where we brainstormed a list of ideas to explore a lineup of Harvestmen, and then we dedicated an episode to just one of those characters, the Harvest Hulk, to push further. This time, we're going to zoom in even closer and focus on exploring a key design element for the Harvestmen, their pumpkin heads. In the full course, I take a more in-depth look at these key design elements by exploring the heads, weapons, and arms of my top five favorite characters from the ideation phase. I'll show you my process, scanning them into the computer, and how I clean up my pencil sketches to create a colorized digital lineup. If you'd like to see the full process or submit your own concepts for critique, you can follow along at proco.com slash monster lab. Okay, let's go draw some pumpkin heads. We've spent about the right amount of time exploring our character ideas. I have a pretty good feel for where they're headed, but now it's time to hone in on some specifics. Some of the key design elements, or as I often refer to them, thematic focal points. These are the parts of the design that I anticipate are gonna be drawing people's attention the most. In the case of our Harvestmen characters, this means we need to spend some time thinking more about their pumpkin heads, specifically their expressions, and the organization of details like the eyes, nasal cavity, and their wild toothy grins. Also, the organic and viney hands and arms, and the shapes of our farm tools and weapons. So I'm gonna start with some of the pumpkin heads. Now, some of the last sheets, like some of my initial warm-up sheets, yeah, there's some fun stuff in there, but I wanna to try to push myself a lot further this time in terms of my expressions. Where last time I was somewhat on autopilot when it came to the expressions and the faces, because I was more concerned with the like primary shapes of the whole character, body language, posing, shapes of the body. Or this time, kind of like zooming in, just isolating these faces. They're getting their own time to be the full focus of my attention. Now, I'm not going to be giving these ones like a flat fill. I'm going to actually leave the as often as I can. I'm going to try to like let the value, the sort of like local value of the pumpkin head pop. In the case of this specific head I'm working on, I think I'm going to I think the idea would be to leave these eyes glowing to try to get like, like suggest VFX. Maybe not in the mouth or the nasal cavity. Just like draw focus to the eye. I haven't done any where I use the like kind of classic jack-o'-lantern thing, like the triangle eyes. Probably should try that, some of that. No, I don't like that one. It's somewhat undirected. My goal here is to show you guys like it's to pay, pay more attention at this stage. What I should be focusing on are like, what are some ways I could handle the heads on the Harvest Hulk? Or... What are some ways I could try to refine the head on Pumpkinstein? Because I think it's fun on Pumpkinstein, but I don't know if it's doing exactly what I'd want. Just looking to push beyond like my instinctual choices to see if I can come up with some stuff that's more specifically aligned with the themes of these characters. So for this big Harvest Man Hulk, you know, like the Etten Cyclopean thing we've talked about a bit, kind of big, wide, doofy. Mm, that's a fun detail, like a bit of crack in some of the teeth, like uh, between teeth in a couple of places. The pumpkin is starting to split in spots. Okay, I'm going to try another one over here. Mm, that's fun with like some more basically like canines, like some suggestion of something like canines. I'll write that down. Canines? Question mark. I might return to it. Not sure if I'm going to do like actual teeth in some of the mouths or if I'm going to do the more classic jack-o'-lantern thing with the, you know, the wedge, like where you cut out the triangular wedges. Both could be cool. I think it's going to depend on like which variant of the Harvestman character I'm working on here. There's some where like a bunch of little embedded wicked, like more like predator teeth, spiny teeth could look really cool. And there's some places where I want a, something a little more old school. I was going to try some like really weirder stuff. Oh, I don't like that grin, but the eye shape in the head was good. Don't be afraid to erase. This is real work. So like unlike in the sketchbook where I'm using ballpoint, these are very rarely like making it into any work. This pencil stuff is the time to try to hit it properly. And if when I don't, then I erase it. Oh, that's kind of fun. I feel almost like a silly cartoon whale or sea creature. I like that. Now is a good opportunity to also spend a little more time seeing how I can use these pumpkin stalks like hairdos. Maybe I'll try the stalk. Way back on the head. Almost feels like a fez, which I'm not sure if that's cool. It's a fez. I wear a fez now. Fezes are cool. This one I'm working on right now, it kind of has a, almost like a big dopey eunuch kind of vibe or something. Like a big fat guy with an exposed belly and a top knot. I don't know where I've seen a character like that. So maybe in Aladdin or something. Disney's Aladdin like has that kind of vibe. It's like a rabbit hole that I have really no interest in going down because 
I'd be creating this like uncon subconscious association with a Arabic character archetype, like storytelling archetype that has no relation to like pumpkin sh and fall. It could be done, but it's not, I'd, I don't see it as like a really worthwhile, I don't know. It's not really getting me much, you know? And I mentioned maybe doing teeth that are more like literal teeth as opposed to the little cut, you know, pumpkin wedges. And I'm thinking of deep sea fish like angler fish and viper fish. It's like hundreds of little teeth. Okay, at this point, I'm still working all for imagination. But it's more about exaggeration, like pushing, trying to find the right expressions. Some kind of puckered lips. That's fun. With some kind of squinted eyes. Ooh, I haven't done anything like that. Every time I do the like double nostrils, it always feels like it's becoming a bit of like a stylized lizard, like a frog guy, and I don't want that. I'm going to delete it. Delete. Erase. Actually, I like that one. That one's pretty cool. Kind of simple. It looks like some kind of bugbear. A stylized take on an ogre. It's not an especially fun expression though, so I'm not sure which one I'll use that. I would use that. I do want these to be fun and it would be really cool to try to capture that in the sculpt is to really use these as a guide even if I, you know, iterate or pivot in the moment. Oh, that's funny. He almost has like cleft butt chin. <laughs> I notice I'm being a bit heavy handed in my drawing right now. This is interesting. Sometimes, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure why, maybe stress, but it does affect my ability to committing to lines too early and, you know, and, and therefore I'm committing to shapes too early. Sometimes with my presentation sheets, you know, these pencil sheets, I, I went really dark on his eyes, but I could see it being really cool to, you know, have like a little pop of white in there, but I pressed really hard already with my pencil, so it'd be difficult to get it back to a true white with my eraser. It's probably possible, but it'll take a while. What I would typically do is I'm just going to wait till I go to scan it and just go back with a white brush. And when I show you guys how to format your pencil drawings for presentation, just for saving them, making them look their best, I'll show you. We'll go through some of that stuff. I saw on here that I saw someone did a clever thing where they made it look like their pumpkin was throwing up. And that could be fun for the big guy, the Harvest Hulk, with some of his multiple heads. Like one of his uh, primary ones could be, look like he's barfing. That'd be kind of funny. It's looking like Pac-Man. Actually, I'm not going to do it. I don't even like that. This is one of those times where like, that seems like a clever idea. It is. But then I ask myself like, but do I really even want to draw that or sculpt that? No. <laughs> That's why it's important. Sometimes like you can see something and you know, if I, was, if I wasn't paying attention, I might have gone down that road further than I really wanted to because it's not enough for an idea to just be like good or clever. It's like, do you want to do it? Like, does, is it actually doing what you want? And it's not. Like, I want those fun grins, those crazy toothy grins. I don't want that like tonally, you know, I don't want them throwing up. That would gross me out. It's not cool. <laughs> I think pumpkin stein could really use some, like that's a place where I really do want to push a little more and maybe harvest lich, but I may be, harvest hulk may be fine, carver may be fine, little sprout may be fine. Let's go do harvest lich. This is the time to do some research. I'm going to look up rotting pumpkins because again, I, I am coming up against a kind of a limit of my imagination. I don't know if I've ever drawn like a, a withering pumpkin. I can kind of think about it like the way the mouth starts to curl in, you know, like pucker. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's interesting. Like on a lot of jack-o'-lanterns, you know, usually cut the triangle, like the th just so you get like the three clean cuts with your knife. Like that's why we usually do a triangle because it's easier. But then when it starts to wilt, I didn't think about this, but it'll start to like collapse on itself. The two angles like this, they start to like drip in, like they pull in and you get a bit of a teardrop shape on the eye. It looks pretty fun. And one thing that's fun about this reference I'm looking at is like the cap, it's almost becoming like a little hat, like a little yarmulke or something, or like a little, I don't know, a little woodsman's hat. <laughs> I don't know, it's making me think of like a yodeler, like in later hosing guys, those yeah. little tiny hats. Oh, that's interesting, with a freaking cigarette in his mouth, or a pipe. Ooh, I do love a character with a good pipe in his mouth. That could just be like a funny detail on one of the heads on the Harvest Hulk, just like randomly along the patch. If you look at the back and there's one with a pipe in his mouth, it'd be less of a focal detail. Yeah, that's fun, but as I dig in here on the faces, I don't like any of these as much as the ones I did earlier, which is probably a sign I could just move on. What I'm going to do is pull up some, both pictures of pumpkins and of human skulls. Maybe more like a mummy skull. So I can see some of the sagging. Oh, sh**. Got a mummy here where like some of the gauze is pulled across, sagging down, depressed into the eye sockets. 
What I like, I like about this particular reference I'm looking at is it actually looks quite a bit like one of those rotting pumpkins. Things are getting squishy and melting in on top of each other. It's beginning to lose structure. I see that flesh sagging in and things drooping. And that's helping me to put two and two together. It's like a bridge between the idea of the sagging flesh of the pumpkin and the skeletal form of a skull. So, I took all that to get to a place really kind of, you know, realistically, I'm actually, this is more like warming up for the day. <laughs> to me, what this really reflects is like the real necessity of that rehearsal I've mentioned so many times. So, I just, you know, filled up a third of a page and I finally got to a place where some things started to click. And that's, that's why you have a process. That's why process matters because anytime you find yourself in like a pinch, like a pickle, like, oh, f this sucks. What am I doing? You can revert to or like rely on your process to help get you out of that pickle. So, okay, I know if I go back and do this, like now it's time to grab that reference, I'm going to be okay. There's really no shame in looking at reference. I just typically don't like to. Like I, I actually just enjoy working from memory and imagination. But like I said, sometimes I come to a place or just actually don't have anything in there. You know, it's like not a thing I've drawn enough or know enough about. And I have to go look outside. You know, it might have been possible to come up with something like that just for my imagination, but it might have taken me like a lot longer. Where this, I saw something that like immediately helped me just put two ideas together. It's the coolest one I feel like I've done yet. I may even just move on and put a star next to it just because we are running out of space on this paper. That would be for the harvest lich. Got him. Let's go to, let's go to pumpkin sign. So, I saw how fast it worked when I just did a bit of research into some mummy stuff, like into some skulls. So, I'm going to look up Frankenstein, that classic Frankenstein, where like out above the crown of the head, it starts to like swell out a bit. So, that's sort of the opposite of what pumpkins typically do. Usually, the weight, because of the moisture, all the water inside the pumpkin, it tends to like draw, you know, because of gravity, it pulls it down and the pumpkin expands out near the bottom. Or in this case, I want to like push it, like invert it to get that Frankenstein head thing going on. I'm going to try to draw a little looser right now because again, I, I was, you know, first little bit in this warm-up session just like committing too hard to my marks like prematurely. So, I'm drawing a lot lighter initially in the same way I would in my figure gesture drawings. Same, same exact way. So, get some of the pucker from the rotting collapsing pumpkin. Taking some notes from the stuff I just did with the harvest lich. This is why it's actually work. <laughs> it, is, it is actually work. It's not, it doesn't just always come easy. I've mentioned this in other videos. Sometimes I'm just working from my comfort zone and I'm making stuff that I've done iterations on many times before. But I have never done a Frankenstein pumpkin head ever. I've done a lot of like kind of like standard crazy face pumpkin jack lantern heads. I've done a lot of that. If I want to make bring this idea to fruition, which I think is a good one, I have to go to this place that I've never gone before and that means I'm going to fail and like that's, that's what you're seeing right now actually is me just kind of like, I have this idea. I think it's cool. It's funny, it's just looking like Hellboy. <laughs> Very the big brow. Got it though. Just got it. Nice. Uh, it's not amazing but it, but I actually do, I do think it's kind of fun and it's doing most of what I set out to do and that's a good feeling. As much as I'm pushing these things or attempting to push them, they are still readable as pumpkins. You know, we talked about like thematic focal points. There's a couple of things here that I'd say are thematic focal points of a pumpkin or a jack-o'-lantern. You just think to yourself and like, what would those be? What are the things that distinguish a jack-o'-lantern or a pumpkin? It's the stock, the color, those type of angular cuts, and the mouth. The ribbing, the vertical ribbing up and down the object. That's why some of these that don't have that ribbing, they'd be the ones that would be most susceptible to being misread until I put those lines in there. Those are identifiers. Without those, Without a couple of those at least, people aren't going to get that signal. They're not going to pick up that signal. And every object has some identifiers like that, every shape. Anything you're going to draw is going to have some key identifying characteristics that if you leave them out, there's potential that people won't understand like what you're doing. Thanks guys. If you'd like to follow along as I develop more of my Harvest Men, or submit your own designs for critique, Make sure to check out the full course at proco.com slash monster lab. Okay, that's all for now. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the monster lab. <laughs>